My name is Chad Laughlin. I'm a senior environmental scientist with the San Diego Regional Board, State of California. Um, I oversee our monitoring assessment and research unit. And one of those projects uh, for our unit is biological objectives for the San Diego region. Uh, I'm lead on that project. Um, Betty Fetcher is also working with me on the project. <clears throat> So, San Diego Water Board really has two overarching goals for biological objectives for our region. The first is to protect high quality waters such as Blue Water Creek, shown here. Um, we do have a lot of high quality waters. Uh, and the second is to guide meaningful restoration. Now, a lot of times when you talk about biological objectives, the focus tends to be on concrete line channels, which I kind of showed in the bottom right corner here. Um, that's really not our priority or purpose for biological objectives because that rec represents really a worst case scenario, a subset of streams within our region. There's a lot of high quality waters. There's also a, a lot of waters in between those that can use restoration at varying degrees. And so it's been mentioned before, actually all these previous talks have really set up my talk really well, so thanks to the previous speakers, um, especially for the acronyms. I don't have to say all the, the words, I can use the acronyms. Um, and so the Clean Water Act goal, protect and restore the chemical, physical, biological integrity of the nation's waters. Uh, within our San Diego Water Board Basin Plan, uh, we have beneficial uses, um, and those are things like municipal water supply, recreation, fish and shellfish consumption, also aquatic life benefits official uses. And we have water quality objectives to protect those. Most of those are based on chemistry as a proxy for aquatic life. And really we want biological objectives to provide a more direct measurement of the condition and attainment of those aquatic life beneficial uses. So for the San Diego region, we have stream beneficial uses, and those include the use of water that supports warm and cold water ecosystems, including but not limited to preservation or enhancement of aquatic habitats, vegetation, fish or wildlife, including invertebrates. And so we are proposing to use invertebrates as a biological objective. And so I'm sorry, this is my busy slide. Um, I'm gonna use San Diego Water Board and R9 uh, interchangeably, like Jim said, that's who we are. We are not US EPA Region 9. Um, Back in 2004, uh, before I worked for the board, um, a long-term framework for regional biological objectives was developed. Uh, and from that, we identified a need for a more specific IBI, uh, also identified the need to address intermittent streams, and we used our San Diego region's swamp funds to basically ramp up bioassessment monitoring. Flash forward to 2008, um, state board stepped up and provided funding to develop a statewide index and also a reference approach um, specifically for their RCMP program. Um, so they uh, funded work for the CSCI and also the statewide reference condition approach. And then in 2013, uh, based on these efforts, uh, we began a intermittent stream study for our region since most of our streams are intermittent. Um, and basically what we wanted to do was look at reference sites within the region to see did the draft CSCI work well for intermittent streams. What we found was, yes, it did. And the reason for that was most of the development and calibration sites for the CSEI in Southern California, specifically San Diego region, were intermittent streams, regardless if they were sampled by PSA or not. Um, and then in 2015, uh, we adopted a basin plan triennial review. So the basin plan, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, um, is a, a document for each regional board that specifies the beneficial uses for all the waters and then water quality objectives to protect those. Um, it's, periodic, peri it's required to be periodically reviewed and during the 2015 review, biological objectives was identified as a priority tier one project. So in late 2015, we started working on developing regional bioobjectives. Uh, in 2016, the CSEI and the reference site approach was published, or were published, and this year we will be releasing a draft biological objectives for public comment and peer review. So we are taking a reference approach. So our objective will be rooted in reference. Uh, what we're gonna do is have an overall narrative objective. <clears throat> And then numeric objective translators uh, for specific water bodies such as streams. 
And so here's our narrative objective uh, for surface waters within our region as proposed. Uh, surface waters within the region shall support an ecologically balanced and resilient community of organisms having a native species composition, diversity, abundance, and functional organization commensurate with that of unaltered analogous waters. So really rooted in reference. Now, based on that, we do have numeric translators in streams that we can use as objectives that you've already heard about from multiple presentations today. So we have benthic macroinvertebrates in the CSEI. Um, we also have uh, regional uh, indices for algae and hopefully soon the ASCI uh, for soft, um, for benthic algae, so for like soft um, algae such as Paralimonia here, one of my personal favorites. Uh, we also have a SoCal IBI uh, for diatoms, which aren't quite as photogenic in the field, nonetheless important. And so basically we're proposing to use the CSEI as the numeric objective. Uh, and if you can remember back to the slide that I talked about beneficial uses, um, they mentioned invertebrates. So essentially the components of the CSEI we're using to define integrity of the beneficial use for streams for aquatic life from the invertebrate, for the invertebrates. Um, and what's nice about the CSEI is because it's a predictive O over E, it's rooted in reference, which is consistent with what we want for our narrative objective um, for the E portion. So to summarize so far, we're gonna propose a narrative objective based on reference, and then a numeric uh, using benthic macroinvertebrates and the CSEI. Um, so you get CSEI scores, you have a narrative, if you want to have a water quality objective, you got to have a number or numbers. So we're proposing to use a percentile of reference approach. Um, now the CSCI publication included uh, categories based on the first percentile and 10th percentile of the reference calibration data set, which is shown here. Um, they called those very likely altered and likely altered. Um, using a percentile of reference approach is pretty common um, from a modeling perspective, also for ecological risk assessment, human health risk assessment. Um, and really for us it's rooted in the actual ecological risk that a site is or is not similar to reference. And so what we are, we're gonna use, propose to use these um, percentiles uh, with some minor alterations. And I should mention that um, in other regions, percentiles can be chosen based on your confidence in your reference data pool. I mean, that's common for environmental cleanups, also for other um, biotic integrity indices. And so what we're proposing to do is, first and foremost, use state and federal anti-degradation policy and CSEI score. So no matter what your CSEI score is, don't make it worse. And then if you're below the first percentile, you're outside of that reference calibration distribution, so your site is impaired. Now, if you're below the 10th percentile, but above the first, what uh, the CSEI authors called likely altered, we're calling that potentially altered. So essentially there's a very low percentage that your site is similar to reference, but there is some percentage. So for that situation, what we're proposing to do is use additional lines of evidence to evaluate sites. And our primary lines of evidence as proposed are algae and toxicity, because these are direct measurements of biological response and condition. And secondary lines of evidence, uh, habitat and chemistry. Uh, these are more causative and oftentimes can, especially for chemistry, are proxies. So how will this work? So basically we have three routes for sites that are in that first 10th percentile area. Um, if you have no toxicity and you have good algal scores using the SoCal IBI or the ASCI, um, you have no impairment from our perspective for water quality objectives. If you do have toxicity or poor algal scores, that confirms that that site is impaired and we'll call it impaired. Now, not all sites are gonna have toxicity or um, algal, algae data, especially for some of the older data. So there is that kind of third way you would go. 
And so in that case, you would look at secondary lines of evidence, physical habitat, your chemistry, to make a decision about impairment. And that's consistent with the approach that is currently used for the listing policy. Now, I don't necessarily like that approach because it's a bit more cloudy because you're not really using direct biological condition measurement to confirm impairment or not. Rather, we like having that secondary information instead of, as, like having it as secondary information instead of evidence. Um, not only for sites that are kind of in that ambiguous CSEI score area, but also for sites that are well below, also for sites that are well above. Because that's additional information on condition that can be used uh, for protection purposes, for guiding restoration activities, for assessing um, implementation. And that's consistent with what Rafi basically touched on earlier. So, how will this be used in the San Diego region? Um, well, we are lucky enough that we've been doing bioassessment um, since the early 90s when I was in elementary school. <laughs> um, don't want to date anybody. Um, so within our region, uh, we have over 1,000 samples at over 300 sites and counting. Uh, so we do have a wealth of data uh, with su su uh, sufficient taxonomic um, level to do CSEI calculation. And so when we look at that, if we look at a CSEI score on its own, what does it tell us, right? Just for objective purposes. So this is Kitchen Creek in Eastern San Diego County. Um, CSEI scores of this site are quite good, you know, 0.95 to 0.98. Um, so it's scoring basically as a reference site, which is what you would expect. So it meets the objective, basic enough. Um, so it's worthy of protection but you don't really have a full picture, so that secondary information for us is as important. On the converse, we have Loma Alta Creek in City of Oceanside. Uh, this is a site that would be impaired under the objective because it is beyond, well below the first percentile uh, of with scores, you know, 0 0.54, 0 0.50. We do have a few scores that are above, but um, it's impaired. Well, now what? Um, want some information about it, right? So that's where that secondary information comes in. And so I'm gonna give some examples of how we envision biological objectives being used in our region and applied. So here's San Mateo Creek. It's down there, you can kind of see the water. Um, and here are cumulative scores for San Mateo. Um, I'm gonna give some examples, they're all set up in this format. So we have CSEI, and we're gonna have the site score, and then in parentheses, we're gonna have the 10th percentile of reference for that. Uh, the D18 is a diatom SoCal IBI. Uh, the S2 is a soft. The H20 is a hybrid of soft algae and diatoms. CRAM, you've heard about extensively. Uh, PHAB, that is the draft physical habitat um, in stream. IBI, which Andy is going to talk about after lunch, so don't eat too much and pass out because you want to listen to that talk. Um, and then toxicity, basically, was toxicity data collected or not? And so for San Mateo, you can see the CSEI score is really good, better than expected for reference. Your diatom and soft algal scores are extremely well, are extremely good. Um, as is the hybrid cram score, really good cram score, and your physical habitat is really good, and your toxicity, there is no toxicity um, at this site. So a more complete picture for San Mateo, uh, really worthy of protection. You know, this also helps you evaluate risk um, for that, of impact for that site associated with any potential projects or anything like that. Here's another example, this is Upper San Juan Creek. Uh, CSEI score for this site is 0.69, so that actually falls between that 0.79 and 0.63 area. So in this situation, we'd want to look at the additional um, lines of evidence. And so if we do, you can see diatoms, soft algae, and the hybrid all perform really well, identify the site as reference. CRAM is actually even better than San Mateo by one point. 
Um, PHAB is really good too. Uh, there was toxicity testing at this site and there was no toxicity found. So this site would actually meet the proposed objective. Um, now, what would you do about it? Well, first of all, I'd want to resample the site just to confirm the CSCI score. Um, second, you might want to look at local factors that might be impacting the bug community if um, you think they may be present. Also, use some of the, the tools that were previously described. Uh, this is the San Luis Rey. There's a site that's uh, right by the 15, if you're familiar with San Diego. Um, and here's an example of, a different example of how you would use these lines of evidence. So CSEI score, again, is between that first and 10th percentile, 0.74. Now, if you look at your algal IBI scores, they are lower, they are not similar to reference. However, what's interesting is if you look at CRAM, and you look at the physical habitat, IBI, uh, they're both performing really well. Unfortunately, no data for toxicity was taken at this site. So um, what's interesting is that the site's got great habitat, does not have great uh, BMI or algal scores, so you know, it points you towards a chemistry problem here as opposed to a habitat problem. So you can use that to help prioritize restoration in a more meaningful way. And just for kicks, I threw in a hardened channel. <laughs> so this is Lower San Juan Creek. CSEI score uh, is below the first percentile, so we would just call this impaired from the onset. But you can see all the algal scores, CRAM, physical habitat, IBI, uh, they're all below what you would expect if, for reference condition. Surprise, surprise. Um, there is a lot of toxicity, acute, chronic, uh, water column, and sediment. Um, now, in terms of meaningful restoration, this site's also 3O, 3D listed for indicator bacteria, for nutrients, for metals, uh, for toxicity, obviously, and also legacy organochlorine pesticides. Um, I'm not going to talk much about implementation, um, that's a pretty big topic, but I will talk about the integrated report, which Jesse touched on. And you can see, she talked about category one and category two meeting designated uses. And we we're one of the regions that was a part of this. And we identified 26 streams that were in category one and category two based on CSEI scores. Now, we also identified streams that were impaired, um, and what we did was we followed EPA guidance and we called them impaired if they were impaired associated with a pollutant under category five. Now, we also assessed if they were impaired due to pollution. Now, and that pollution is kind of a confusing term, but according to EPA and the Clean Water Act, that includes things like habitat modification or concrete lining. And so we also evaluated those. And what's interesting, and most folks don't realize, is that if you have an impairment due to habitat modification, that is not part of a TMDL. TMDL is done for pollutants. And so you can see that we listed 29 streams under category 4C, which is the pollution, and 5, and 26 streams under category 1. So we really do have a decent chunk of high quality waters. And among those 4C and 5s, there's a lot of different conditions, a lot of different stressors. So, in summary, uh, we're proposing to use a reference approach. Our focus really is on protecting high quality, um, and we want biological objectives to be used to provide a better resolution to equate for better restoration for those water bodies that are impaired, and even for improving water bodies that may meet the objective but could actually have functional lift by doing additional implementation methods. And I have a link um, down here. I know Jim's gonna post this, so uh, you can get that. If you're interested to get on the liars list, you can also talk to me um, afterwards. That's it.